so the questions that we got was, how do I connect faith in the issue of gender identity? Yeah. And can someone be gay and be a Christian? Yeah. Huge. So say a couple things on, on those. And yeah. Well. Yeah. I think I want to uh, aim for that second part okay. of the question yeah. of, can, can I be uh, a Christian and be gay? And I think how I want to answer this question is, is centered on that word identity, mm -hmm. you know, what we find our identity in. Um, and so my, my uh, gut response to this question is actually to say yes to this question. Um, again, going more into the detail of uh, what do we mean by uh, being gay, mm -hmm. right? If um, something that I've personally been struggling with, I've kind of alluded to earlier, um, is you know my identity of being um, African American and having that as a as something that. It plays, plays out every day in my life, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it shapes me. Um, but I had to come to, um, I don't know, maybe it was the spirit being very gracious with me. It didn't, feel, uh, <laughs> it didn't feel good in the moment, but I had to come to a realization that I was actually putting my ethnicity above mm -hmm. my faith. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually came through uh, being at a conference where Tony Evans was talking and he said, um, uh, we, too often we say that we're black Christians. Mm. He says that in that moment, and he's a great preacher, um, in that moment he said, well, you just put your race or ethnicity mm. in the form of an adjective. And what's the, for, what's, what's the method of an adjective is to modify whatever comes after, mm. right? I'm, I'm sure you're thinking school's out right now. Why are we <laughs> talking about grammar right now? But now black is modifying your Christianity, mm -hmm. right? It's modifying your faith in Jesus. And it's supposed to be the other way around. Yeah. Your faith in Jesus, so it shouldn't be, I'm a black Christian, it should be, I'm a Christian who is black. Mm -hmm. Now your faith is modifying everything that comes mm -hmm. after it. Everything after it is, is being in, in submissive yes. to um, your faith in Jesus. And so that's why I feel like I can respond with a yes here. Yep. If you are um, someone who, from the, from the time that you can remember being attracted to someone and so, someone of the same sex, um, I, I, that you have been attracted to someone of the same sex, um, but you are trying to faithfully follow out what scripture says, and therefore you come to passages like Romans 1 mm -hmm. um, or other passages in you know, 1 Timothy or 1 Corinthians, right? Um, and you're seeing what it says there, saying that, um, you can't. You you should not practice these um, same-sex romantic relationships, and you're actually trying to follow that out. But you still have this attraction, though. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't. I, I just don't think God is looking down upon you in that moment. I actually think God is is smiling and saying that you are trying to be obedient to me, mm -hmm. even with this temptation that is there. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm perfectly fine if someone says, "Hey, I'm Christian and I'm gay." Because that tells me, if you're actually following the Word of God and you're allowing the Word of God to, to disciple you mm -hmm. more than maybe a community is trying to yeah. disciple you, um, then that means that you are being um, submitted to the Word of God and therefore mm -hmm. I'm okay. I will say this, um, that may sound like a no to some people though. Mm -hmm. And so me going and all of that, I can see someone totally just being like, well, no, then your answer is no. You cannot be gay and be a Christian because to them that means actually practicing sure. and actually mm -hmm. living it out. And if that's the case, if that's what it means to be gay to that person, then the answer is no. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's more than that, um, or it may be less than that. Sure. Um, so yeah, I think that'd mm -hmm. be my answer to it, Michael. I won't clear, clear it up, man. Well, yeah. it's a good answer. I mean, yeah. we, we would, I would use different words to say the same basic thing. Mm -hmm. Depends on what you mean by the question. You yeah. know, if it's, can I be a faithful follower of Jesus who's also active in a, in a homosexual, homoerotic mm -hmm. relationship. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's yeah. unfaithful to scripture, to scriptural teaching. Can I be, uh, you know, can I be consistently and regularly attracted to members of the same sex and mm. be a follower of Jesus? Yeah, faithful follower of Jesus, yes. Yeah. It's it's at, on that level, like yes. any other temptation or pull. Um, yeah, and I, yeah. you know, the, so one of the things I suppose I'd say too, in addition to that, just in terms of approaching the whole of these questions yeah. is, there's a number of different layers to it, and, it, and we do well to think about the various layers. Yeah. So on the, there, there's the simple question of what does the Bible teach about homosexuality or homoerotic relationships yeah. or these various things? And there's the five texts. You mentioned the three New Testament yeah. ones, then there's Leviticus 18, yes. 22, 20, and 2013, maybe Genesis 19, depending on how you take it. Five or six passages. And really pretty consistently they say, um, uh, no, you know, that, that God designed sex yeah. to be within marriage and that marriage is between a man and a woman. 
And you know, the argument from, from those who would want to be fully affirming would be, but they're not talking about our version of sexuality. Right. And for reasons we can't go into now, historically and psychologically, that's just not a very good argument, yeah. actually, um, that they knew of all forms of, of homoeroticism, mm -hmm. even yeah. if they didn't use the same terminology to yeah. describe it. Yeah. And it was pretty, it was not pretty, it was consistently ruled out. Yeah. So the question is, what does the text say about these things? But then there's like the broader, I guess, theological question. What does the Bible say about marriage and sexuality as a whole? And mm -hmm. this is where it would touch on the gender piece. And really what the Bible says is that sex is designed to display God's love for that which is similar but different. That's mm -hmm. why it belongs in the context of marriage, where mm -hmm. we're similar but different. And yeah. so we come together in such a way that increases joy and produces new life. That's Adam and Eve in Genesis yeah. 1, uh, summing up these various binary pairs that work together harmoniously to continue yeah. creation. So there's this like theological answer. Okay, but this is what sex is for. Sex is for marriage yeah. and marriage is for displaying God's love for that which is similar but different. Yeah. And therefore, all of the various rules, not just the ones with respect to same-sex attraction, but all of them yeah. flow from that basic picture of what God made this thing for, the purpose of it. But then there's the third piece, and that's like the cultural piece. What are the assumptions that I may have taken in from culture that make it hard to believe and celebrate that? Yeah. And that's where most of, most of us, a lot of us live. That's where a lot of yeah. our students live. Yeah. I have counseled so many students who themselves are wrestling through their own same-sex attraction, and many more who are wrestling with, you know, how do I demonstrate love? And, and, and I, I want to affirm what I yeah. see as, as, as joyful. What's, what's the problem with this? Um, and again, we don't have time to go through them, but it's kind of like what we talked about with some of the other issues. If you believe that disagreement is dislike, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then it's going to be hard to disagree on mm -hmm. this and believe that and actually yeah. demonstrate love and yeah. believe that you're demonstrating love. If we believe that you have to have as much sex as you want to live a full life, yeah. then it's going to be really hard to answer this. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that we kind of believe accidentally that we wouldn't believe if we thought about them mm. that make it really hard to believe and celebrate it. Yes. And then there's, of course, the act of love, the impl implementing um, uh, our, our convictions, putting yes. them into practice. And, you know, again, so many things we could say about yeah. demonstrating love and truth. Yeah. Uh, but I think the thing that we would want to say here is think it through on the various levels. Study the scriptures. Understand why it says what it says. Think through your assumptions and continue to demonstrate truth and love as yeah. best you possibly can.